it's so many things that I can say about Soul and the type of person he is. But the most thing that sticks out in my head a lot now is that he's a man of his word. If he tell me he's going to do something, I can all, now, I've learned that it's going to happen. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I know it's, it's going to happen. Deep thinker, uh, Mr. Soul, he would get in some, some good debate with Mr. Muhammad. And I would just sit back and watch these brothers go at it. But it was deep, it was philosophical, it was intelligent, intellectual, conscious. Like I said, I had never even wrote a, uh, read a whole book before I met, you know, since before I met him. I, I never read a whole book. It, but once I got to talking to him and sitting down with him and he got to taking my mind outside the prison walls, you know, it just, it made me start thinking clear. And it's amazing that they could have such a relationship and he be in prison and she's out here, you know. But that's just the type of person he is. He's so loving and so understanding and he loves her so much. Everybody knows that. Yeah, I consider myself a very talented individual when it comes to music. But Gary is, uh, has that much talent or more because he, he has what you call raw talent. I um, was doing a book club at Warren Correctional Institution um, for the um, inmates there and it's purely voluntary and um, so was a member of it. I, I know, having known him for three years, that um, whatever he did, I, I know he would not do it again based on what he said and what he wrote and what he did when I did know him. I know that he's loyal. He never missed a book club for any reason. Every time we had book club, he was there. He never said he had to do this or that or the other. I know that he loves his daughter and he's committed to helping her with her life. I know that he's very smart and I know that he's an excellent writer. He, um, he has an empathy and a, and a way of interacting that, you know, I've, I've been in teaching for 40 years, I'm old. Um, and I think if it weren't for the fact that in Ohio you may not teach if you've ever been convicted of a felony, I would love to see him as a high school teacher. But barring that, I think he could do work with kids, with young kids. And that's what he has expressed to me in the past that he'd like to do. And, you know, I have a lot of experience with observing 22 years of observing student teachers, you know, interacting with kids. And he's as good as anybody I've ever seen. The thing that really struck me the most about Soul was how he always kept his spirits up. Even in that place, you know, we in jail, but he always kept his spirits up. He can talk to her about anything, you know, when it comes to boys and sex or whatever, you know, and most fathers can't do that with their children. She's changing school district in, into going into her high school years, and she's kind of upset about it, and her father he tells her, he was like, you know, look at it as a positive way. You know, you're going to meet new people. You're going to learn new, different things. And, you know, it's just like, she's like, okay, Dad. And, you know, he was telling her it's not going to be as bad as you think it's going to be. It's, it could be as good as you want, you want it to be. And I'm like, wow, he's telling her all this from there, and she's receiving it. He's probably one of the best barbers I've ever seen or met in my life. And... No formal training. You know, he cut my hair in high school. He, he dropped his eye, he just dropped my name in my hair. And I know people in barber college can't do that. You know, so, I mean, the guy's just an all around talent. And it's just like that talent's going to waste. Now, this is very strange. I mean, I know this is probably going to seem hard for most people to believe, but for him to be in prison and not have altercations with other guys, that's really very strange, believe it or not. Because, you know, it's a hostile place, it's a hostile environment. It's a very negative environment. I've never seen him fight, I've never seen him argue, I've never seen him even raise his voice. And it's a penitentiary. 10 years? Right, right, exactly, and I did 10 years. Yeah, with him, with him. And never seen him fight, that's strange. My name is Shire Nicole Lindsay Boy, and I am Gary's daughter.
but he tells her that she's a princess and that uh, she can do anything and that, you know, he just just built her up in so many different ways, you know, and it, you can see her attitude and her, she just blossoms, you know, when she gets off the phone from talking to him, you know, and he does me the same way, you know, and it's like, how does this man know me like this, you know? It's hard sometimes, like, just the fact that I never get to see him. I mean, I get to see him, like, only, like, on a monthly basis and sometimes longer than that. But it's hard knowing that you can't see him every day and knowing that he does so much for you when he's not even there. My father taught me about responsibility, about courage, and about defining myself to the world. He calls when she needs him the most, just out of the blue, you know, and... As if they have some sort of a connection. Exactly, they feel each other. exactly, you know, and he, and she does have that connection with him. She really does. Hello. Hi. Hi, baby. <laughs> Hi, Dad. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? What, I'm good. <laughs> what am I? A king. And what are you? A princess. And what's the nature of being a princess? To know yourself and define yourself to the world. You know that's right. <laughs> what, what you doing? Um, talking about you. <laughs> are y'all on camera? Yes. Oh, tell the people I said hello. <laughs> My dad said hello, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I better get out y'all way then. I'm, I didn't want to interrupt y'all video shoot. <laughs> How long y'all been shooting? Um, for about 10 minutes now. Okay. How's it been going? You okay? You feel comfortable? Sort of, yeah. I'm a little this, nervous, this, but... This, this is the debut. This is this is what's going to make you a movie star. People going to see this video and be like, <laughs> we got to get her on our show. <laughs> so you got you to gotta twerk it, make it work for you. <laughs> I love you, very, too. Very, much. And, um, yeah, just try to be as comfortable and just tell the truth. I mean, it is what it is. Okay. Okay. And, and give me, uh, what's our verse? Give me, what is it, Philippians chapter 2, verses, what is it, 5 through 8? 5, five through five 6. 5 and 6. What is it? What is it? Um, let this mind be in you as it was in Christ Jesus, who in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay, baby, I'll speak to you later on, Princess. Okay. Love you. Love you, too. Bye-bye. Bye. So how did that feel? It felt good talking to him. How does it make you feel? Tell me. <laughs> it makes me happy. Um, just to hear his voice and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I have no problem whatsoever with with soul. And and that's not true of every single man I've met there, but I would have no problem at all. He's a wonderful person. He doesn't belong there. He did his time. He's a wonderful father. He is, you know, is other positive things that he can be doing out here to help people to help young people not end up where he came from. Gary has been in there for over 15 years. He did a crime. I feel he's paid for his crime. And sometimes we have to look at the person for who they are. You, know, you just have to look at it from a father's point of view. You know, if your child was in there and he has done his time, would you want him to come home? <laughs> Anything else you want to say? Um, that I love him, and I can't wait till he comes home.